Thomas, Terence and the snow. Autumn was changing the leaves from green to brown. The fields were changing too, from yellow stubble to brown earth. As Thomas puffed along, he heard the chug 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 of a tractor at work. One day, stopping for a signal, he saw the tractor close by. Hello, said the tractor. I'm Terence, I'm ploughing. I'm Thomas, I'm pulling a train. What ugly wheels you've got. They're not ugly, they're caterpillars, said Terence. I can go anywhere, I don't need rails. I don't want to go anywhere, said Thomas huffily. I like my rails, thank you. Thomas often saw Terence working, but though he whistled, Terence never answered. Winter came, and with it, dark, heavy clouds full of snow. I don't like it, said Thomas's driver. A heavy fall is coming. I hope it doesn't stop us. Pooh, said Thomas, seeing the snow melt on the rails. Soft stuff, nothing to it. And he puffed on, feeling cold but confident. They finished their journey safely, but the country was covered and the rails were two dark lines standing out in the white snow. You'll need your snowplough for the next journey, Thomas, said his driver. Pooh! Snow is silly soft stuff. It won't stop me. Listen to me, his driver replied. We are going to fix your snowplough on, and I want no nonsense, please. The snowplough was heavy and uncomfortable and made Thomas cross. He shook it and he banged it, and when they got back, it was so damaged that the driver had to take it off. You're a very naughty engine, said his driver as he shut the shed door that night. Next morning, both driver and fireman came early and worked hard to mend the snowplough. But they couldn't make it fit properly. It was time for the first train. Thomas was pleased. I shan't have to wear it, I shan't have to wear it, he puffed to Annie and Clarabelle. I hope it's all right, I hope it's all right, they whispered anxiously to each other. The driver was anxious too. It's not bad here, he said to the fireman, but it's sure to be deep in the valley. It was snowing again when Thomas started, but the rails were not covered. Silly soft stuff, silly soft stuff, he puffed. I didn't need that stupid old thing yesterday, and I shan't today. Snow can't stop me. And he rushed into the tunnel, thinking how clever he was. At the other end, he saw a heap of snow fallen from the side of the cutting. Silly old snow, said Thomas, and charged it. <laughs> Cinders and ashes, said Thomas. I'm stuck! And he was. Back, Thomas, back, said his driver. Thomas tried, but his wheels spun and he couldn't move. More snow fell and piled round him. The guard went back for help, while the driver, fireman and passengers tried to dig the snow away. But as fast as they dug, more snow slipped down until Thomas was nearly buried. Oh my wheels and coupling rods, said Thomas sadly. I shall have to sit here till I'm frozen. What a silly engine I am. And Thomas began to cry. At last, a tooting in the distance told them a bus had come for the passengers. Then Terence chugged through the tunnel. He pulled the empty coaches away and then came back for Thomas. Thomas's wheels were clear but still spun helplessly when he tried to move. Terence tugged and slipped and slipped and tugged and at last dragged Thomas into the tunnel. Thank you, Terence. Your caterpillars are splendid said Thomas gratefully. I hope you'll be sensible now, Thomas, said his driver severely. I'll try, said Thomas, as he puffed home. 